arm bars from Spiderweb. This actually was not my class. Uh, so I'm filling in last minute for this class and I'll preface it by saying I don't do arm bars from Spiderweb, right? But uh, I have done quite a few EBI uh, tournaments and we have over time that starts off in either Spiderweb or back control. And so I do have some experience doing it. Um, and we'll talk about how I try to finish the arm bar from there as somebody who absolutely hates grip fighting and grip breaking. Um, I'll do my best to explain how I deal with that. But we're starting off with a really fun drill that I do. And it's going to be a great way for us to focus on how we control our bodies within an arm bar, both on the offense and the defense. Okay, so it looks like this. Renee's gonna arm, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna arm bar Renee. Do it from um, my guard, please. Oh, my guard. Here's okay. All right, so it doesn't matter how I set my arm bar up, I just care that I get a tight position. Renee's gonna defend by going figure four grip. I'm going to lace through, and I'm gonna grab my lapel if I have it. If not, I'm gonna also go figure four grip. Okay? My arm goes over the head, and I clamp from here, all right? From here, Renee's gonna walk over my head and stack me. I'm gonna move out. He's gonna flip him, okay? Pardon me, step over my head. He's gonna roll. He's gonna walk his hips away from me. Stack me. I come through, to the head, roll, stack me. And my job is just to now separate from my training partner the whole time and just to ride this bull, right? He has to continue to move without opening his grip, okay? So if at any point I need to let go of the arm, so we can do it again, or my legs relax, go ahead, I'm gonna fall off of him. So I'm constantly in the hamstring curl pulling Renee into me Renee has to keep his figure four grip so I can't arm bar him, right? But neither of us are trying to submit. We're just trying to roll through that whole motion without losing connectivity. Does that make sense? So I don't care how you guys set your arm bar up. You set up arm bar, okay. get his grip. I have to underhook, grab my lapel or figure four. He's gonna stack me. My head goes under him like this. He steps over, I roll him to his back. He walks his hips away from me, switches his hips, stacks into me. I come through again. And we just follow that same motion over and over again. If you guys are feeling spicy, speed it up, right? Renee can try to go a little bit faster and try to shake me loose and kind of centrifuge me away from him. Um, that's cool too, just play with it. See if you can hold on if you're riding a bull. Does that make sense? Let's start there. If you all suck at this, I have to revamp the whole thing. So nail it. Cool? <laughs> Let's do it. Ready? Wow, that was terrible. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad, right? It, it's a weird drill at first. It's hard to get used to. Um, reality is that's what happens in a live roll. Right? If I go to arm bar somebody, they're going to try and stack me to keep their arm bent. My exit strategy is to come out the back door. If that happens, they're probably going to forward roll. They're going to stack me. We're back to the beginning. So understanding how we can stay connected uh, is hugely important. I love it because as grapplers, we tend to focus on either our legs or our arms, not always at both. Okay? And in this drill, I have to make sure I'm clamping with my legs whilst also keeping my arms together. Top player also is learning how to defend appropriately without having to put their hands on the mat. And one of the big skills we learn in Jiu Jitsu is how can I do a roll without using my hands to keep myself safe, right? So rolling with our hands occupied is a pretty important skill to learn. Was anyone completely lost on that? Did everyone at least do one? Oh God, that's not good. At least do one good rep. Yay. It's like all the confidence in the world. Everything else is gonna be easier, okay? And so I set the bar pretty high and uh, yeah, we're good, we're fine. 
It's okay, whatever. So let's go back and talk about what happens in spiderweb. Is anyone not familiar with what spiderweb is? Okay, good. So we're simply talking about a, an arm bar position that you've all seen before, right? And so if I have Kevin in my, in my arm bar, he's on his back. Let's make him repeat this way, please. We'll have our ankles crossed, all right? I'm nice and close to him. Typically it means my top side, my front side arm here is going underneath. My secondary arm is gonna grab a hold of his leg. Right? So historically, this is what's known as spider web control. Uh, we often find ourselves here after we attempt an arm bar. Like maybe we're going from mount to an arm bar, and now we're seated next to somebody. Or we go for a guard arm bar, arm bar and we tip them over to their side. Okay? So I'm sure we've all been here before, yes? Perfect, right? When we add the leg control, it helps to stop Kevin's stack defense. Okay? So I have just his arms, he walks his hips away from me. Now he starts to stack me, okay? If I hold his leg, I keep him nice and tight to me. It keeps him from walking away. This also stops him from hitchhiker escaping, okay? So it's a really good control. We'll get to the leg later, but let's focus on what our legs are doing, our legs are doing right now, okay? In arm bars, we talk about having either separated legs or linked legs. When we are doing a top side arm bar, meaning on top of somebody, we will almost always lock our ankles together, okay? This is because I don't have to control his head independently of his hips, okay? Right now he's flat on the mat. What I do wanna control is how far he is away from me, right? So I'll keep calling this my shoulder line or my <coughs> elbow line, right? Which we talk about for knee line in, in leg locks, it's the same with arm bars. I want as much of Kevin's shoulder and tricep up on top of me as possible, okay? This gives me really good control. Kevin would like to walk himself away from me and get his elbow to the mat, okay? So that's his primary escape. When I look at this from a guard arm bar, so stack me. Right, now if I cross my ankles, Kevin can gain posture by elevating his head, right? So we, don't, we almost never wanna cross our ankles on a guard arm bar. We want to have separate legs because now I can control Kevin's head and control Kevin's torso while hamstring curling him into me. Okay, but once we knock him, so walk your hips towards this direction. Okay. Circle, 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 just circle. Yeah, there you go. As I knock Kevin in his back, now I don't need to control his head anymore going down into the mat. The mat's holding him there. Okay, so now I can start pulling him into me and crossing my ankles and controlling that inside shoulder line. Everyone follow? Good. So, so our next drill is going to be gaining as much shoulder line as possible, crossing our ankles underneath the outside shoulder, right? I don't care if it's left over right or right over left. Um, it'll change depending on how I react next. So play with both variations. But now I'm going to hamstring curl nice and tight, put my hands on the mat, and Kevin's going to escape. Okay, so go. Yeah, like, like legitimate escape. Yeah, keep moving through there. your elbow. Yeah, if I relax my legs, he moves away, his elbow comes out. So even though it is significantly easier to use my arms and my legs, and I would never do this in a live role, we're gonna do what we call skill building, right? I'm building a skill, and that skill is can I control that shoulder via a hamstring curl? Okay, so ideal position is a little bit higher up, under the outside shoulder, good crossed ankles, nice hamstring curl, and go. And I want Kevin to go 100%, go. Yeah, let's get for real. Yep. He should be able to escape, okay? So now, give me European finals. Escape, <laughs> like legitimately, like escape for real. There you go. Good, yeah. If I can control a black belt for five seconds, that's fucking awesome, right? So I should never be 100% successful in this drill, okay? If Kevin never escapes, he's being a bad partner. Make sense? Any questions? Cool, find a partner, drill this to failure. Maximum effort. If you never succeed for more than one second, that's okay. All right, let's do it. Ready?
How did that feel? A bit tough on the ears. A bit tough on the ears? I don't care about your ears. <laughs> Was anyone not able to control even for a moment? Okay, good, right? So when we kind of, was that, was that a so-so? Yeah, well, so-so means you controlled for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever we skill build, we're really taking things away from like rational decisions, right? We're doing things that are completely unrealistic, but just trying to skill build that one momentary thing, right? The reality is I'm gonna do a thousand things to help that one moment, but if I only train it as a whole, then that one moment becomes less and less and less effective, right? And so it's super important I train that way because that hamstring calls, uh, control is, is hugely important, right? If I have someone's arm, uh, Renee, please. And I say, okay, now I'm gonna take my arm bar and I'm gonna hold on to his arm and do the exact same drill without using my legs he's gonna escape right away, right? So an arm bar with legs and not arms is semi-functional. An arm bar with arms and not legs is completely useless, right? And so we gotta really prioritize what our legs are doing in this moment, right? So arms are obviously still important though. The arms are what's gonna help us break that arm and extend it. But here's the rule. Anytime I'm attacking a submission, or a position in jiu-jitsu, I have to operate in two teams of grapplers, okay? My legs work as one team, and my arms plus my head are the second team, right? One team needs to always be clamping while the other team is manipulating, right? If I clamp with my legs and clamp with my arms, we create nothing, right? I'm frozen to Renee. He probably can't escape, but I also can't submit him. If I relax my legs and relax my arms, we have chaos, right? Which is sometimes okay, right? There's times when chaos is okay and there's times when total clamping is okay. But most of the time, I need to be moving him with my arms while my legs clamp or moving him with my legs while my arms clamp. Make sense? So we now know we have a leg clamp. We're gonna hold him with our legs. This is what allows us to move our arms, okay? Now, if I start attacking his grip and my legs forget to be working, that's when he escapes, okay? Independent teams working for the same task. My legs are clamping. But sometimes I have to move my body more. So my arms will clamp so my legs can start moving. And that's okay, as long as I follow those same rules. Does that make sense? This is reoccurring in all of our, all of our techniques. So think about that all the time. I'm clamping. I'm moving, I'm clamping, I'm moving, right? I'm clamping, I'm moving. Go in that order, you'll have huge success with keeping your submissions active. Everyone follow? Beautiful. So now, I would love to be back on top of Renee, right? I will very rarely end up on my butt behind someone um, going for an arm bar. If this happens, I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes, okay? I either dismounted voluntarily or I went for a guard arm bar, arm bar that ended up knocking him over, okay? To me, the perfect arm bar is one which Renee's bicep on his arm, on his right arm, is touching his chest, okay? And so if I, so straighten your arm, please. If I arm bar Renee out here, his whole body is pretty far away from me. That gives him lots of options for escape. Yeah, he's moving like crazy. So if Renee wants to escape the arm bar, he wants to separate his body, to separate his bicep from his chest. Conversely, if I want a really tight arm bar, I want to move bicep across his chest, right? And be in here. This is one where I'm really isolating the break and I'm controlling his arm and his whole body, okay? That's why I love guard arm bars. A guard arm bar is gonna make him be on top and smash that bicep to his chest. So how do I go from, I made kind of a mistake and, and separated from him to getting on top? Well, I gotta change that clamping and moving. So now my arms are gonna clamp. If I have a gi, I can utilize my lapel to complete the, camp, the clamp while also having a free arm to move. 
If I don't, I've got to commit to having two arms on my training partner, all right? His escape is predicated on the distance of his elbow line. So the higher his elbow is up in my chest, the farther he is away from escape. The lower it gets towards my belly button, the closer he is to escape. So I'm gonna push down on his wrist and pull up on his arm to really get that nice high elbow, all right? The higher his, help, his elbow is, the better it's gonna be. I won't go to a Kimura grip here. I'm gonna to go to this grip right here, all right? I'm not even grabbing his wrist, because for me, my wrist can't really flex well, so I just come here. So go ahead and defend your arm. Yeah, he'll be here, yeah? I'm moving here. So now I can start moving myself a little bit. This is where I have to break the rule, slightly. If I have a gi, I can grab my lapel. If I have no gi, I'm gonna grab my shin. Okay, so my hand went to my shin. I'm checking his hips so he can't run away. Stepping off and coming back up. Okay, but I'm still hamstring curling. I'm still being tight. He made a noise just now. That went, Ugh. that was what I wanted to hear, right? When I drill, I drill pretty rough. Like I'm, I'm very tight when I drill. Uh, it's important to do that. So let's work on getting on top of somebody, following those rules. So I have a clamp, nice and tight. I adjust, I'm gonna momentarily go to two clamps, arms and legs, either via my grip, high elbow, grab the leg, hand at the hip. Now I'm clamped really tight. If I relax my arms while my left leg separates, he's gone, okay? So tight clamp, tight clamp, back to it, yeah? Let's all just get right to here. Tight the whole time, yeah? Yeah, right? So I want him to be ready to stop and say, please don't do that anymore. Yeah, he should be wanting to tap mentally, but he's not, he's not I'm not gonna injure him, but he's uncomfortable the whole time. Does that make sense? Everyone follow? Let's do it, ready? Good, a couple of things, right? So uh, in my functional movement class, I'm big on your body following your hands. Uh, in most cases, if your hands lead the way, your body will follow, right? And so, you know, if I'm trying to move on top of somebody and I put my leg side hand behind me, it's very hard to move forward, right? A lot of us are still doing that. We had the leg, hand moved to here, now it's tricky. The second I move my hand forward, it pulls me forward, right? So if I have, uh, Kevin, please. If I want to get to the top, it's a hard battle here, right? It's not easy to get on top against an active grappler. But if I go to do this and my hand is here, it's almost impossible. And then once I have weight on my right hand, I can't move my right hand, right? That's not realistic. Because what happens is, the second I start doing this, Kevin leans back into me and he keeps his hand planted. Make sense? So I have to make sure I'm kind of coming forward here and getting up on top, all right? Once I'm here, I'm really tight with my legs and I'm pinching, I'm still hamstring curling and I'm humping down into the back of his tricep, right? I wanna think about putting my groin to my knee, I'm sorry, to my heel. I'm really pushing through him. And then from here, my hand stays on the mat. I'm gonna walk my hand out. I never touch his hand, right? I'm gonna use the V shape of my forearm plus my bicep to match the oval shape of his wrist. And that's what controls it. If I try to grab his wrist, I'm always gonna lose that, okay? I don't need it. I'm gonna hug nice and tight here. I'm gonna just pull his arm off his body and get to the break. All right, but I really want to feel like I'm skinning the muscle off his bone, All right? I'm really squeezing tight. If I have a lapel, I grab the lapel and I'm tight, but I want it to be as max friction as possible. If I have no lapel, it's the same. I just nice and tight from here, yeah? I'm nice and tight from the ground. I drive right through, walk that out. So I'm not even out to his wrist yet and it's already gonna be pretty much on. I'm leaning towards his leg, not out like straight ahead. From here, I'm gonna rotate a little bit and find that. Um, roll your thumb to defend your elbow. Yeah, he can move a little bit because I don't have a hand here. This is better for control of the thumb, but it doesn't matter. 
All right? So defend. I just changed my angle. So you go thumb towards your pants. Yeah. So don't be too focused on what his thumb is doing to stop him from moving his thumb. Watch his thumb as a way to tell you where to break. Okay? Let's add that detail in, finish that submission real quick work time, and then we'll talk about some finishes from our butt. Yeah, let's do it. Ready? Good. Any feedback? Like it a lot. You like it a lot? Yeah, it'll, it'll be, uh, especially if I'm transitioning from mount to an arm bar, uh, if I come off of you onto the side of you like this, uh, like the original spider web, I've made a giant mistake, right? We should be staying on top. The beauty of this is if I'm on top in this S mount kind of shouldn't across the face setup and things get really hairy, returning to mount is relatively easy, right? Once we commit to, you know, being in mount and then stepping off of somebody and it is like white belt arm bar, it's chaos. I mean, I think my favorite mount escape is to give you an arm bar, right? Like, I know you're going to fuck it up. I know it's going to be bad, right? So I'll be in mount. And... So let's, let's not give up top position just so we can chase a submission, right? The finish on the top should be pretty brutal. The beautiful thing about this is the way that we roll Renee up onto his side here gives us tons of back exposure, right? And in my opinion, every match in jiu-jitsu should be a chase for the back, right? If I catch a submission along the way, I'll take that for sure. But my goal when I high five at the beginning of every match is get on the back and strangle, right? That's my goal. So if I have this, I do everything right, I'm moving through, I get his arm straight, so I break the grip, and he throws the turtle from here, or I get to yeah, defend it. The back step to the back take is pretty easy to make happen, right? We have back exposure, we have mount uh, security. A lot of cool things happen when we chase it this way, right? The struggle is, can I get up on top of him, right? And some guys are really good at keeping us grounded and not letting us get on top. And so um, we should have some good options still if we can't make our way on top, right? So if I'm stuck in spider web, we end up here a, number, a couple different ways, but I try to progress forward. Renee drives back into me every time, so I just can't get up. That's okay. Right? I'm gonna make sure I have a nice, good, secure here and start grip fighting. This is my least favorite thing in all of grappling. I don't like to grip fight, I'm very lazy. All right? I'll do cartwheels and flips and ninja shit, but I don't wanna grip fight. So um, if he's strong, this is a hard battle to win. Right? I will typically transition my way to a triangle or I'll take the back from here before I deal with breaking the grip. Um, so it's kind of like I had success in getting to a submission but I failed in keeping the arms separated. So I have to concede that and go to the next thing, right? That's me personally, but this class is about finishing from spiderweb. So we'll talk about a couple of different grip breaks. The go-to typically, especially if they have this beautiful like RNC kind of snake S grip, uh, which what you guys should be doing from here. Um, if you're going to a 10 finger grip or a gable grip, um, it's just triangle city or all kinds of bad stuff. Um, the second I feel like somebody is stepping over my head I'm looking to get to this exact grip right here. And this is gonna give Renee the most security. The harder I try to pull with my arms, I'm actually driving my left leg into his face, which compresses his left hand, which compresses his right hand. So the more action I go in breaking this grip, the tighter his grip becomes. That's why this grip is so dominant for defense, right? The weakest link is gonna be his right fingers. Right, these fingers right here are coming through. And so I've got to break the grip in a way that keeps those fingers inactive, okay? But the challenge is, this is his rock climbing shape, right? So if I'm rock climbing, my fingers are like this. So if I want to break that grip, I'd love to go this direction with his right hand, but his arm's in the way, okay? So I've got to muscle through this. And usually, if I have a gi, Again, I'm grabbing my lapel. If not, I'm grabbing my thigh, but I'm still kind of shrugging my shoulders, getting that high elbow. And I'm just gonna palm strike him, all right? And it has to be like, it can't be, please let go, right? Like I have to actually like 
palm strike him. But I immediately have to reclaim some space, okay? As this grip breaks, I lost some tension with my legs, okay? It always will happen. So I'm clamping tight with my heels. I'm clamping tight with my arms. I'm gonna punch, and at the same time, I'm pulling him in as tight as possible with my hamstring curl, okay? So I'm really tight here. Give me like a, like a half uh, strength grip, all right? I'm really tight, okay? So now from here, all I'm gonna do is hug and come out to the end of the lever. You'll notice with that last arm bar and this arm bar, if my legs are moderately active, I have to go really far to get my submission, all right? If my legs are very engaged and pulling him, the submission should come out much faster. So I wanna try and think about squeezing him until his guts come out of his bottom, right? It's only happened twice. I also wanna strip that muscle off of his, of his tricep, all right? And so I'm squeezing nice and tight from here and I'm actually gonna pull until I feel like I'm pulling that muscle off and then sliding up and then getting my finish from there. I should never actually have to elevate my hips off the mat, okay? Our goal should be to finish it without having that separation. Does that make sense? So he's in his good defense. I'm here. I'm preparing myself for the attack by getting a tighter bite, nice and tight. I'm striking straight from like elbow to wrist, right? If I come out here, it's just me palm striking him. So slide down. Right away, capture, slide out, squeezing everything tight. More often than not with my arm bars, they tap before the arm is even straight. It's a lot of pressure kind of all the way through the arm. So really make it, if they tap, I'll often say, do you tap to the elbow or the shoulder or the pec? I don't know, everything hurt. Make everything hurt. Any questions? B ninjas and palm strike them. Don't clap yet. You can't just leave whenever you want. All right, ready? I wish we had more time. We like just got into this, right? We have, um, you know, there's, obviously I saw some of you guys changing from uh, this grip to this grip, uh, it's a completely different grip break, right? Um, if you pick the wrong grip break for the wrong grip, it won't break it, right? So every time someone does a different grip break or a different grip to defend, my grip break will change. There's no universal grip break besides just being fucking strong, right? And so um, make sure we're picking the correct technique that applies, right? Uh, great question. Why do I not get up on top, right? I talked about it briefly, but he didn't listen. But <laughs> no, no, because I'm not able to get on top, right? As, as, a, as a defender from the arm bar, I want to keep him seated next to me. I feel so much stronger there. And so as he's trying to roll to push me forward, I'm constantly keeping him on his butt, right? My goal is always going to be, uh, Kevin, will you arm bar me? Oh. Right? My goal is always going to be to start looking at him. Right? Because if he gets me looking away from him, then he's getting more and more elevation in the shoulder. This also allows him to come up on top of me. But if I feel Kevin starts to move to a top side position, go ahead. I'm constantly pushing him this direction. Right? So this is where he might want to post his hand behind me just to keep that as a base, but he still can't come forward, right? For Kevin to move his right hand, I have to relax the pressure, okay? If I keep him heavy on his right hand, it's very hard to move his right hand, all right? So that's why I would go to a grip break and I would fight from here, right? In every other scenario, my attempt is to be on top, yeah? Any other questions? Yes. I had a feeling that when he has the mm -hmm. uh it was so painful if just if he elevates the elbow that he could not even need to, to tap. I mean, if just doing this, it was like, okay, I got to give you a Awesome. Yeah. 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 I want I mean, everything to hurt. If you tap because your ankle hurts, 
I win. I don't care, right? <laughs> but I think that like, uh, if you roll with me, I'm very flowy and very mellow until I have something I want to eat, right? And then I get very, very strong. And so um, I'd like you to really not always be sure why you tapped, but everything should be extremely uncomfortable, yeah? And my, my big philosophy is, um, you know, first off, strength is very good in jiu-jitsu. Um, we lie to ourselves by saying strength isn't important. It's very important. But if I use my strength dynamically, I'm a dick. Meaning if I rip things and pull and like jerk, and that's me being a dick. If I use my strength as a constriction, it's always okay. Because if you tap because I squeezed your forearm muscle so hard that it hurt you, you can always tap and I'll stop doing it. Sorry, not tap, but opening the... Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, but yeah. But you, but you open, you like, well, because it hurt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pain compliance. If you forget everything besides one thing, don't forget clamping and moving, moving and clamping, right? This is going to help you in everything you do in jiu-jitsu. It took me 10 years to think of this and nobody ever taught me this. And it's a simple thing. You can be completely lost in a role and have no idea what you're doing. Think about that. It'll slow things down. It'll let you move without losing your opponent. That's all I got. Can we get a photograph? Thank you guys so much. Let's go over here, please.